So you saw there's the new Ivy Bridge E series of processors from Intel. So we're talking the 4820K, the 4930K, and the 4960X, all of which are unlocked and overclocking ready. But what you may have also noticed is that there weren't any new motherboard chipsets. So how do you upgrade your system to an Ivy Bridge E processor? We're going to walk you through all the steps, and there really aren't that many of them. Step number one, go to your motherboard manufacturer's website and download the latest BIOS or UEFI to a USB drive. Most of the main motherboard manufacturers do support flashing the BIOS via this method, so as long as you unzip or unraw or 7-zip or whatever it is you have to do to extract the files and chuck them in the root of a USB drive, then plug that into a USB 2 port on the back of the motherboard, you should be pretty much good to go. Something to note is that if for whatever reason your USB BIOS flashing utility doesn't work, try another USB drive because sometimes there can be compatibility issues between the controllers and the very rudimentary controller support that goes on before an OS level implementation. Once you have plugged a USB drive in, what you'll do is find whatever your motherboard manufacturer calls it. So in our case, we've got the Easy Flash 2 utility. Open that bad boy up and boom, there you have it. So you can actually browse the files here and then you can see the available files here, which I, of course, can't see because the screen's on this side of me. Ah, yes, so we can make sure that we've got the latest one, which happens to be 4302 for our P9X79 Pro motherboard. Select that baby right there, and of course, look at your screen again to make sure that you're not clicking the wrong thing. Press OK, and it will verify that the BIOS is indeed the correct one for your board. Flash it. You don't want to restart your system during this process or lose power. In fact, if you have a UPS, I would recommend having your system plugged into it. But once it's done, reboot that, and you are pretty much ready to install your new CPU physically. Now, we're going to go ahead and make the assumption that if you put your heatsink on your system at some point, you know how to remove it, or at least you have the manual somewhere for how to remove it. So we've removed the heatsink itself. Next up, well, things are pretty straightforward. So you undo first the looped retention arm, then the kinked retention arm. Once they're both loosened, you can go ahead and lift up the hold down plate, which gives you access to the CPU. Carefully note the orientation of the CPU inside the socket with the little golden arrow pointing towards the arrow that is on the hold down plate itself. Take out your old CPU eBay it or you know, give it to a really good friend or whatever else the case may be. Remember, it's 2011, so it's still pretty darn good. Then take your new CPU, which I am, of course, picking up the same one again because this is already an Ivy Bridgie in here. I'm just doing this for illustrative purposes. Put it back into the socket. Same orientation. That's key. All right. Put down the retention plate. Fasten the kinked retention arm. Fasten the looped retention arm, and then put your heatsink back on. Now that you've performed the BIOS update necessary and the CPU swap necessary, you have effectively upgraded your LGA 2011 system from Sandy Bridge E to Ivy Bridge E. Give yourself a pat on the back and click that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed for more videos like this from NCIX.com.